Welcome back for another Waterfowl Wednesday, and today we're going to be talking about goose hunting with a small spread. So as somebody who doesn't have access to thousands of goose decoys, I have some experience with hunting geese with smaller spreads. So I figured I'd give you guys some tips because I know not everybody can go out and buy thousands of full body Canada goose AVNX decoys. So what I have is two dozen full bodies and two dozen shells. I've got probably close to a dozen sleeper shells and a dozen actives. I also have about a dozen feeder full bodies and a dozen active full bodies. So the biggest thing I can tell you to do if you want to kill geese in a field with smaller spreads is to do your scouting. Because if you can set up where the birds want to be, it doesn't matter if you have no decoys, it doesn't matter if you have thousands of decoys because those birds are just, they, they're zeroed in on it and they want to be there. So if you do your scouting properly and you're able to get into that field, you're able to get on the X, you're able to set up right where they left that evening, you're gonna have an awesome hunt because those birds are gonna come right back and they're gonna land right in that pocket and you're gonna shoot birds. So personally, what I like to do is find the fields where the birds are gonna be because it's hard to traffic birds with four dozen decoys. I mean, that's not that big of a polling power when you set it all up. You're like, you know, this really doesn't look that big. But if you go over to Bobby's channel, he's able to traffic birds left and right because he's got monstrous spreads. But me, I have to do my scouting and I have to get on the X or as close to the X as I possibly can to kill those birds. What I like to do with my decoys is I like to put the full bodies especially the feeders right in the pocket. And if I'm setting up, I'm gonna be making a horseshoe or like a J, I don't get super fancy with it. I leave them just one pocket and then they come in and land. Sometimes I make two pockets with a W, so I make it look kinda of like this with my decoys. So then they can pick from this pocket or this pocket to land in. What I like to do is towards the points of the pocket, towards the, the single point, I like to put my feeders and the full bodies and kind of the better looking decoys to where the birds will finish and look at the actively feeding decoys. And then what I like to do with my sleepers and the shells is I like to put them kind of off towards the edges, off to the sides, and mainly more towards the front of the spread, not the back where I'm sitting. I'm going to be sitting in the back and they're going to finish into the back of the spread. So I put them more towards the points of the horseshoe. So then they're like, you know, I don't really want to land here with these sleepers. I want to be in the party zone. I want to be with the actives and be where that food source is. And I like to use my shells as just kind of a, a confidence decoy, you could say. Just kind of having that as being, you know, we, we've fed, we're happy, we're going to sit down and sleep for a little bit, you know. It's, it's a pretty decent way to build confidence with the birds in your spread. Another tip that I can give you is to do kind of family groups with your decoys. It spreads them out, makes the spread look a little bit bigger. And so you're going to put, you know, a half a dozen decoys here, four over here, three here, a dozen kind of in the main area. So you're just kind of building pods, but still keeping that horseshoe shape. I like to do that a lot when I'm hunting with my smaller spread for some bigger Canada geese. So you're going to have a better time killing birds and getting birds into your spread if you scout. And if you're able to get those fields that the birds want to be on and set up where they left off, if you have three, four dozen decoys and you set them up in just a generic horseshoe, you know, pretty decent looking decoy spread, you will be able to kill birds. Make sure you're hidden really well. I never overlook how your blinds look. You want to get them really brushed in, make them look pretty hidden and stay kind of low profile, stay concealed and you should be good to go. Kill 
The only thing I could see people struggling with and I've struggled with in the past is when you get a big group of cacklers, which are lesser Canada geese, they, they're they loud, they're squawky, they're a different creature than the big Canada honkers that I usually shoot. And so when they're in that big group squawking away, you know, it's hard to get them down with a smaller spread. But if you're getting groups of a dozen big daddy greater Canada geese, the big honkers, you'll have a good time with the smaller spreads because the way I look at it and the way John explained this to me is he said, you know, the cacklers, they're annoying and the Canada geese, the big daddy graders, they're like, I don't want to have any part in that. So what he said was he likes to think of the Canada's as being the Barry Whites, the cool cats. They like to just, you talk, they talk, you know, that kind of deal. But that goes into calling and other stuff. I made a video on goose calling, by the way. But what I'm trying to say is you don't need a giant spread to kill the big geese and the big ones that come in smaller groups. But if you're seeing only giant groups, you can try. The only thing that I could see being an issue is if you have giant groups of geese, especially lessers. Lessers are pretty finicky birds. I don't dabble in with them. I don't get that many around here. I get a lot of the groups of dozen Canada's, you know, I don't get anything super giant. I've had hard times getting lessers to come into a small decoy spread and I've heard from a bunch of people that if you're gonna kill lessers, you need to have a giant spread and have a lot of people calling and be very squawky, loud, and annoying. And that's basically how you kill lessers. But if you guys have any tips for getting giant groups of lessers in with a four dozen decoys, please leave it in the comments. I would love to hear it because, you know, it's kind of hard to get those guys in sometimes. If you guys have groups of like a dozen Canada's coming out, the big greater, they're not really called greater, but just big geese, not the lessers. You know, if you have groups of 12 to 15, maybe even like 30 at a time, you should be, you should be good with just four dozen decoys, maybe even less. I've hunted with just my full bodies before and I've killed geese that way. So, you know, I think bottom line, it just comes down to scouting. It doesn't matter what your decoys look like. It doesn't matter if you call or don't call. It just matters if you're in the spot where the birds want to be. Everything else is just helping you get those birds to come in. That is kind of my tips for killing geese with smaller decoy spreads. If you guys have any tips for everybody else that's watching, something that I forgot to cover, something that I missed, something that I just blatantly forgot to do, leave it in the comments. People will probably be reading through those and that will help them and it will help me and we'll all become better hunters together in this waterfowl hunting community on YouTube that's growing every single day. If you guys would like to, you can pick up one of these hoodies or one of these hats at mallywackeroutfitters.com. There's a link in the description of this video. You can also follow Mally Wacker Outfitters on Instagram. And you can also follow me on my Instagram, my Twitter, my Snapchat, my Facebook. It's all in the description of the video and I probably got it on the screen here somewhere. That is about all I've got for you guys today. I hope I covered everything that I needed to cover. I'm pretty sure I forgot some stuff, but you know, hunting is hunting. And so it can be, you can do everything right in your book and the birds will say something different. So don't be afraid to change things. I don't think I've covered that in the video, but don't be afraid to change things up and move decoys around because that could be the game changer right there. But like I said, if I missed anything, leave it in the comments. I would love to hear it. I want to learn. I'm sure you guys want to learn some more too. I want to say thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a thumbs up. It means a lot when you guys do that. And I will catch you guys on the next one.